Good afternoon or good evening whenever you are watching our Monday Thursday service. Again, this is not how we would like to celebrate Holy Week, but we still get together around God's Word. We still get to focus on all that our Lord has done for us. And today we see how He serves us. We have a God who did not come so that we would wait on Him hand and foot, but that He would wait on us hand and foot with, and with His own body and blood. And we'll examine that today as we continue our Lenten theme, the Jesus that we need is someone to serve and not to be served. We'll follow the order of service that you can find uh, a link to our worship folder in the description below in this YouTube video or also linked from our Facebook page and then also in the email that was sent out if you received that. You can also follow along with our worship PowerPoint in the picture-in-picture picture on this part of the screen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our first hymn. In this season of Lent, we have heard again how our Lord walked the path of suffering which led him to the cross for our salvation. We have also heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, our flesh, and the devil. All that keeps us from loving God and one another. This is a struggle to which we were committed at baptism. God's forgiveness and the power of his spirit to amend our lives continue with us because of his love for us in Jesus our Savior. Within the family of the church, God never wearies of giving peace and new life. In the absolution, we receive forgiveness from God himself. 
as he uses a sinful human being as his instrument to speak powerful words. This absolution we should not doubt, but firmly believe that our sins are thus forgiven before God in heaven. For it comes to us in the name and by the command of our Lord. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. In Holy Communion, the members of Christ's body participate most intimately in His love. At this time, even though we cannot gather to celebrate this sacrament, we patiently await the day when we can gather as a family of faith around this meal that Jesus has lovingly given to His church. With eager hearts, we long for this simple yet awesome meal. For when we come to the table of the altar, together with the bread and wine, we receive the Lord's gift of His body and blood for forgiveness and participate in that new covenant that makes us one with Him and one another. The Lord's Supper is the promise of the great banquet we will share with all the faithful when our Lord returns, the joyous culmination of our reconciliation with God and each other. May God quickly bring the day when we can observe this meal as a congregation assembled in this sanctuary. We continue with the last stanza of when you, worked that thir- when you woke that Thursday morning. Let us confess our sins to God and ask for His forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful God, I confess to you that I have not loved you with all my heart in what I have done and left undone. I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. I have not loved my brothers and sisters as myself. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. I am truly sorry for my sins. I repent of them. I look to you for mercy, O Lord. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for us, Cleanse me from my sins. Release me from my guilt. Grant me your Holy Spirit to amend my sinful life. The Almighty God has been merciful to us and has sent His Son to die for all. For His sake, God forgives our sins and calls us from darkness to His marvelous light. Upon this, your confession, as a called servant of Christ, and by His authority, I announce the grace of God unto all of us, And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I speak what he tells Christians to speak in John 20. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven us and reconciled us to God and has promised us the power to forgive and love each other. Relying on his promise, therefore, be reconciled to one another. Brothers and sisters, May the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, in our words, and in our actions. We continue with stanza five.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give us your true body and blood as a remembrance of your suffering and death on the cross. Grant us so firmly to believe your words and promises that we may always partake of this sacrament to our eternal good. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Exodus 24. Where after God gives his law to Israel through Moses, the people worship and they offer sacrifices prefiguring the ultimate sacrifice, the once-for-all sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And then, because of what Jesus would do, God is able to celebrate in a meal with the elders of Israel. We ourselves get to participate with our God in the meal of Holy Communion, although not now in the way that we would like to, but one day soon we'll be able to gather together as a family of believers and celebrate this supper And look forward to the day when we celebrate it with our God in heaven. Exodus 24. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel. You are to worship at a distance, the Lord had said. He got up early the next morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve stone pillars representing the twelve tribes. And they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as fellowship offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and the other half he splashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people. They responded, We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy elders of Israel went up, and saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was something like a pavement made of lapsus lazuli, as bright as the blue sky. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God, and they... We continue with our second lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Here Paul passes down the institution of the Lord that he himself received from Jesus, our Lord and Savior. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. So then, whether whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat and drink, for they eat the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat or drink the cup without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. This is the word of our God. Our verse of the day, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Please stand in honor of the gospel of our Lord. Our gospel for this Monday Thursday is the account of, that John gives us of the upper room, where Jesus not only instituted the meal that we call Holy Communion, but he also gave an example of how now we should love one another. Not necessarily by washing each other's feet, but by showing unselfish deeds of love so that we might share the love that he gave to us that led him all the way to the cross. John chapter 13. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise be to you, O Christ. We continue with our hymn of the day, Soul Adorn Yourself with Gladness. The first six stanzas.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins. Amen. A portion of scripture for our consideration on this Monday, Thursday, are the words of institution taken from the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, as well as Paul's words in 1 Corinthians. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. This is the word of the Lord. My dear Christian friends, this might seem like a strange time to be talking about the Lord's Supper because of these different circumstances that we're in right now. We can't gather in our normal worship setting to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And so we might wonder why even bother talking about it. I mean, yes, it's Monday, Thursday, so I suppose we should, but but perhaps there's something else we could talk about this evening. Then again, it was kind of a strange time for Jesus to institute the sacrament of Holy Communion. On the night he was betrayed, of all the nights, Jesus chose this night to establish this holy meal. The night that began with the Master on his knees, washing the feet of his servants when it should have been the other way around. The night when one of his disciples betrayed him and another denied him, despite that disciple's vigorous protests that he would never do so. The night when Jesus spoke of his impending doom, or impending death, and instead of hearing words of comfort from his disciples, they spoke empty promises that they would follow him all the way to death. Words that turned out to be false bravado when they all abandoned him at his arrest. But yet it's this strange time on this night when Jesus did choose to establish this holy meal for his church. A church full of people like you and me. Sinners who betray Jesus with our lack of faith and deny him with our silence instead of bold confessions of our faith and abandon him with our neglect of his word and make empty promises that we will change our lives for the better only to fall into the same sins again and again. Perhaps this is the perfect time for us to focus on the Lord's Supper. And and I think there really is something in common with the current circumstances that we're in. The Lord's Supper, the teaching about it, perhaps more than almost any other doctrine in the Bible, requires us to take Jesus at his word. And these current times in history when perhaps there is more fear and anxiety and uncertainty than at any other time, at least in the last 80 years or so, these times also require us to take Jesus at his word. This teaching about the Lord's Supper is maybe one of the most misunderstood teachings in the Bible. On the one hand, you have Roman Catholicism, which teaches that the priest is offering up Jesus' body and blood as a sacrifice to God, earning his grace, which he then distributes to the people. When the priest says the words, the body, the bread and wine are miraculously transformed into Christ's body and blood, and that cease to be bread and wine. Roman Catholicism is attempting to teach how Jesus' body and blood are really present, trying to explain that. 
On the other hand, you have so many other Christian churches which say that the bread and wine in the Lord's Supper merely represent or symbolize Jesus' body and blood. In their way of thinking, the Lord's Supper is, is a nice way of remembering Jesus' death. It's an act of obedience on our part, something we do for God, rather than something God is giving to us. They can't get their minds around how Jesus' body and blood could be really present under bread and wine. It doesn't make sense. And so they're really refusing to take Jesus at his word. But Jesus' words are so simple. This is my body. This is my blood of the new covenant. A covenant or, or last will and testament is something that's very solemn and straightforward. Yet Jesus, when he died, he had nothing to his name. They even took his clothes and, and divided, up, divided them and cast lots for them. What, could, what did he possibly have that he could will to us? Well in, this, well, in this meal, he wills to us, he gives to us all that he did have. Himself. The bread is the very body of Christ. The blood is the very blood, the wine is the very blood of Christ. The body and blood of the Son of God, born of Mary, who took on human flesh, who gave his body into death and shed his blood on the cross as the payment for all of our sins. We take Jesus at his word when we believe that he means what he says. I mean, he's God. What right do we have to question what he says? And yet our human reason so desperately wants to do that. We want things to make sense. And maybe we're struggling with that in this current situation too. Trying to make sense of this virus and what it's going to mean for our future. But we need in this supper to go back to his word. To set aside human reason. Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood. Like Luther, who consistently pointed people back to Jesus' words when he was discussing the teaching of the Lord's Supper. So we also need to just simply take Jesus at his word. We don't try to make sense of his words. We don't try to explain how he can be present. We simply trust his word. Trust what he says. The hymn writer who wrote the hymn that were, that's being sung before and after the sermon, Johannes Frank, he puts it this way. These great mysteries unsounded are by God alone expounded. And God expounds them in his word. Where he tells us so clearly that Jesus' body and blood are present under bread and wine. There's a communion between them. And again, Jesus is God. He can be present any way he wants. Why should we question him on that? Let, let him be God. It really all comes back to Jesus' words. And again, his words are so simple and straightforward when he tells us about the blessings we receive in the sacrament. This is my body given for you. This is my blood of the co new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Just think of that. The day after Jesus established this meal, he gave his body on the cross and shed his blood on the cross as the payment for the sins of all humanity, as the payment for my sins of betrayal and denial and lack of faith and false promises. And now in this meal, he gives me that very price he paid he gives that to me, and in doing so, gives me the blessings that his death earned. The forgiveness of my sins. The forgiveness I so desperately need. 
The same forgiveness he announces to me in his word. In the Lord's Supper, Jesus is giving you the forgiveness of your sins in a very personal and tangible and individual way. And yet it again all comes back to his word. Just think of how Luther in the Catechism, when he teaches about the Lord's Supper, continuously points us back to Jesus' words. He asks the question about what blessings are given in the Lord's Supper. His answer? That is shown us by these words given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Through these words we receive forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation in this sacrament. But how can eating and drinking give such great blessings? Again, Luther's answer. It is certainly not the eating and drinking that does such things, but the words given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whoever believes these words has what they plainly say, namely the forgiveness of sins. Well, what about being properly prepared to receive the sacrament? Again, Luther says we need to take Jesus at his word. He is properly prepared who believes these words given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. The words for you require nothing but hearts that believe. The Lord's Supper, understanding it, appreciating it, receiving blessings from it, it's all about taking Jesus at his word. This bread is truly Jesus' body. This wine is truly Jesus' blood given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Could there be anything more precious, more valuable? Johann Frank expressed this in his hymn. He who craves a precious treasure, neither cost nor pain will measure. But the priceless gifts of heaven God to us has freely given. Though the wealth of earth were proffered, naught would buy the gifts here offered. Christ's true body for you riven, and his blood for you once given. Right now, however, I know that all of us are suffering pain in, in one way or another. Perhaps it's the pain of loneliness as you are separated from family or friends or co-workers with these safe at home directives. Maybe it's just the pain of disruptive schedule, schedules. Perhaps it's the loss of a job or income or losses in your financial portfolio. Perhaps it's the very real pain of knowing someone who is battling this virus or perhaps who has even died. And perhaps it's just that you're crippled and paralyzed with fear and anxiety. Just like in the Lord's Supper, we need to take Jesus at his word. So in these challenging situations, we also need to take Jesus at his word. When he says to us that he came not to be served, but to serve, and to serve more than just washing feet, but to give his life as a ransom for many. Or when he declares to us, Son, daughter, your sins are forgiven. Or when he assures us that because his father did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, he will graciously give us all that we need, even and especially in these anxious and uncertain times. Or when he promises that whoever believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Or when he comforts us, with the promise, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Or when he assures us that nothing in all this world, not death or life, not disease or, or the devil, can separate us from the, his love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Or when he declares to us that because he lives, the sting of death 
and sin and hell is gone. And Jesus lives and reigns over all things for our good and for his church. Johann Frack, the hymn writer, lived in the 17th century. He was actually born at the beginning of the Thirty Years' War, a war that devastated Germany. He lived at a time when plague could show up at any time and anywhere. What's interesting about Frack is that he was not a pastor or a theological professor. He was a lawyer and a politician. But yet he was a theologian. He knew his doctrine. He knew that to understand and appreciate the Lord's suffering, we needed to take Jesus at his word. And in doing so, he expressed the joy and treasure we have in the Lord's Supper. Sure, we can't celebrate the sacrament like we are used to doing in these difficult times. But we can still take great comfort in the gifts Jesus gives us in the Lord's Supper as we take him at his word. We see Jesus' loving heart open wide to you and me, even and especially in these anxious and uncertain times. During this Holy Week, may this be your prayer as you take Jesus at his word. Lord, by love and mercy driven, You have left your throne in heaven on the cross for me to languish and to die in bitter anguish, to forego all joy and gladness and to shed your blood in sadness. By this blood redeemed and living, Lord, I praise you with thanksgiving. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we continue with the Great Litany. O God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have have mercy mercy on us. O God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. O God the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, 
Three persons and one God. Have mercy on us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forebears. Spare us, good Lord. Spare your people, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Spare us, good Lord. From all spiritual blindness, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from every lack of charity. Good Lord, from all deadly sin and from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of, for your word and your will. Good Lord, deliver us. From earthquake and tempest, from drought, fire, and flood, from civil strife and violence, from war and murder, and from dying and suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, and by your proclamation of the kingdom. Good Lord, deliver us. By your bloody sweat and bitter grief, by your cross and suffering, and by your precious death and burial. Good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit. Good Lord, in our times of trouble, in our times of prosperity, in the hour of death, and on the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. Receive our prayers, O Lord our God. Hear us, good Lord. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is according to your will. Hear us. Enlighten all ministers with true knowledge and understanding of your word, that by their preaching and living they may declare it clearly and show its truth. Hear us, good Lord. Encourage and prosper your servants who spread the gospel in all the world and send out laborers into the harvest. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep your people, that all may find and follow their true vocation and ministry. Hear us. Give us hearts to love and revere you, that we may diligently live according to your commandments. Hear us, good Lord. To all your people, give grace to hear and receive your word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand firm in the faith. Encourage the faint-hearted. Raise up those who fall. And finally, give us the victory. Rule the hearts of your servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice, love mercy, and walk in the ways of the truth. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and defend all who strive for our safety and protection, and shield them in all dangers and adversities. Hear us, good Lord. Grant wisdom and insight to, to those who govern us, and to judges and magistrates, the grace to execute justice with mercy. Hear us, good Lord. To all nations grant unity, peace, and concord, and to all people give clothing, food, and shelter. Hear, Hear us, good Lord. Grant us abundant harvest, strength, and skill to conserve the resources of the earth, and wisdom to use them well. Hear, Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten with your spirit all who teach and all who learn. Hear us, good Lord. Come to the help of all who are in danger, necessity, and trouble. Protect all who travel by land, air, or water, and show your pity on all prisoners and captives. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen and preserve all women who are in childbirth, and all young children, and comfort the aged, the bereaved, and the lonely. Hear us, good Lord. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphaned, the refugees and the homeless, the unemployed, and all who are desolate and oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Heal those who are sick in body or mind, and give skill and compassion to all who care for them. Hear us, good Lord. Grant us true repentance. Forgive our sins and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Hear us, good Lord. 
Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come. come. Your Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be with them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the ages to come, life everlasting. Since at this time we cannot gather to celebrate the Lord's Supper, we will review the truths of this meal as revealed in the Holy Scriptures and explained in Luther's small catechism. What is the sacrament of Holy Communion? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, under the bread and wine, instituted by Christ for us Christians to eat and drink. Where is this written? The Holy Evangelist, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the Apostle Paul tell us, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. What blessing do we receive through this eating and drinking? This is shown us by these words given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Through these words we receive forgiveness of sins 
life and salvation in this sacrament. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. How can eating and drinking do such great things? It is certainly not the eating and drinking that does such things, but the words given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words are the main thing in the sacrament, alone with eating and drinking. And whoever believes in these words has when he say the forgiveness of sins. Who then is properly prepared to receive this sacrament? Fasting and other outward preparations may serve a good purpose, but he is properly prepared who believes these words given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whoever does not believe these words or doubts them is not prepared because the words for you require nothing but hearts that believe. We continue with Psalm 88. Oh, 
sheep have gone astray, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. By his wounds we are healed.